Like peanut butter and chocolate, Blaster Master for the NES combines two great tastes to make one delicious game. It's one part Metroidvania, with side-scrolling action across an enormous open world, and it's also part Legend of Zelda. You'll work your way through mazes from an overhead perspective, searching for a massive boss that guards your next weapon or upgrade. These two styles blend together nicely and make for some very advanced gameplay for a title released all the way back in 1988. Blaster Master was developed by Sunsoft, a highly underrated developer for the NES. While Nintendo, Capcom, and Konami were pumping out hits, Sunsoft quietly released some incredible titles, including Batman the Video Game, Gremlins 2, and the cult classic, Gimmick, which was sadly never officially released in North America. Blaster Master almost met the same fate as Gimmick. It was originally released in Japan under the title Cho Wakuse Senki Metafight, which translates to Super Planetary War Records Metafight. The original game featured an anime-inspired sci-fi plot. In the future year of 2052, the evil tyrant Goez leads his Dark Star army to attack and conquer the planet Sophia III. The Science Academy Nora creates a super tank and power suit as a last-ditch effort to save the galaxy. Hero Kane Gardner is tapped to pilot the metal attacker and defeat Goez for good. The game didn't resonate with the Japanese audience, and sales were poor. Sunsoft knew they had a good game, and they took a chance by releasing it in North America, where it was a surprise hit. At the time, Sunsoft's marketing decided that Western players wouldn't like the anime-style story, so they hastily slapped together a replacement. The US version opens with a textless cutscene that sets up the story. Our hero, an average teen named Jason, has a pet frog named Fred that escapes from his fishbowl and just happens to hop onto a large box of radioactive material that was conspicuously sitting right in Jason's backyard. After mutating to massive size, a sinkhole opens up underneath Fred and when our hero jumps in to rescue him, he just happens upon an alien tank named Sophia III, and also a pretty slick hazmat suit, which will hopefully keep the radiation from turning Jason into Master Splinter. Very convenient. This game's absurd plot would even be turned into a novel for young readers as part of Scholastic's Worlds of Power series of video game adaptations. When a sequel for the PlayStation was eventually developed, characters and elements from this book were officially canonized as the full story of the original game. One of the most memorable things about Blaster Master may be the box art itself. While most NES games like to keep the look of their final boss a surprise, Blaster Master slapped the ugly face of the plutonium boss right there on the front cover. As if to say, good luck getting this far, player. I can't think of any other title that ripped the final boss sprite straight from the game to make their box art. In modern times, Blaster Master has a very strong legacy. IGN rated it as number 22 on their top 100 NES games of all time. Sequels were published on the Game Boy, Sega Genesis, and PlayStation, plus the great Blaster Master Zero series on modern platforms. It even influenced the gameplay in other Sunsoft titles, like Fester's Quest. If you want to play Blaster Master today, it is currently available as part of the NES games included with the Switch Online service. Modern players will need to be prepared for all of the challenges that NES games are notorious for. There are instant death hazards, limited lives and continues, and some of the most difficult boss fights on the system. 
But what if I told you how to find every item and upgrade you need to make your way through the huge non-linear world? What if I told you multiple strategies for fighting all of the game's most difficult bosses? And what if I told you there was a secret way to skip one of the game's entire areas? On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. You may think it would be easy to find a frog the size of a Volkswagen in an underground cave, and you may think that a tank is not the best choice of vehicle for traversing some subterranean tunnels. But in the world of Blaster Master, you would be wrong on both accounts. This area is very large and has sort of a journey to the center of the earth type vibe to it. We start out in the tank, which is named Sophia the Third. You may remember that was the name of this planet in the Japanese translation. Try to avoid falling into the spiky area below as you make your way to the right. It's not an instant death hazard, but if you fall in there you will take massive damage and if you hang out there for a few seconds, you will lose a life. When you come into the second room I like to jump up on top to try to avoid that ceiling turret before I come down here and make my way to the right. Once you go through this door, you'll see a bomber enemy. You just want to try to avoid those guys and make your way down to the right. Just keep heading down and to the right whenever possible and eventually you'll get to the bottom where you'll see that there's sort of a lake below us. Make your way to the right when you're on the lake level and when you come down here, well you'll notice that Sophia the Third is not very good in the water. So you want to hit select to jump out and we will just be Jason himself now. Jason can swim proficiently in the outside areas. If we take this ladder up, we are going to enter into our first interior area where the perspective will change and it's going to feel a little bit more Legend of Zelda in here. If you're having trouble entering the door, make sure that you're pressing down and not up like you would in most other NES games. Blaster Master has a slightly unconventional control strategy in that way. When you get into this room, you'll notice that you have two weapons you can use in this overhead view. The B button fires our standard gun, and the A button will launch grenades. The grenades are a lot more powerful than our gun at this point. We start out with the level zero gun, but you'll notice that I just picked up one of these F icons, and that has raised my gun to the next level. So now I have the level one gun, which has enhanced range. I still think that the grenades are more powerful than the level one gun. The one thing that we need to be careful of here is that if we take any damage from the enemies, we will lose a level of the gun. So we need to be very careful not to take any unnecessary damage here. Use your grenades on this sentry enemy and make your way up into the next room. Here we're going to see some giant floating heads. We want to take them out with our grenades. The grenades never lose their effectiveness if we take damage, so anytime our guns are at a weaker level, we'll probably want to be primarily using the grenades. When you defeat these giant heads, they drop multi-warhead missiles, which are a nice extra weapon for our Sophia the Third tank. And up here in this room, that flash indicates that we're about to fight our first boss, the Mother Brain. Position yourself on the right side of the screen and stay close to the Mother Brain to avoid the floating orbs as you attack it with grenades. If it gets too close to you on the right side, you can actually go up to the top of the screen and move left across its body without taking damage. Once it's defeated, you'll be able to get the Hyper Beam module, and that's going to be a power-up for our Sophia the Third tank. 
which will increase the power of the primary cannon. Once you have the hyper beam, make your way back through the water over to where we left Sophia the Third, and you'll need to press the select button to jump back inside. Once you're back in, climb up these ledges and make your way over to the left. You'll need to go a little bit right here to be able to head back to the left. Watch out for these jumper enemies. And if you see any of those P items that they drop, you'll want to pick those up to refill any lost health that you have. As you come over here, just keep making your way to the left, and there's going to be a guardian of the gate over here that we'll need to destroy. Now we can switch to our multi-warhead missiles, hit it with the hyper beam, and then press down and B to launch a couple missiles. You will need to damage it with the hyper beam before it will be vulnerable. And once you pass through him, we will come down this small corridor, being careful of the mine enemies. Try not to jump on them like I just did. This large door in the bottom of the screen will lead us to Area 2. When we enter Area 2, we'll immediately be assaulted by these worm enemies, which are some of the most annoying enemies in the entire game. You see, our tank shoots straight ahead of itself, but enemies that are very close to the ground actually are very difficult to hit with the way our cannon is positioned on Sophia the Third. You also can shoot upwards, so don't forget that as you make your way up this corridor. You'll notice that it looks like your tank should be able to shoot diagonally as you angle the cannon upwards, but you really only have three shot directions, left, right, and up. The diagonal shots don't really work. You can use your multi-warhead missiles to take out some of these worms as you proceed up here, but you do have a limit to how many of those you can use, so you'll want to conserve them when possible. Head through the right. This skull guy seems to hit me every time I come in here, so don't be too upset if you get bombarded as soon as you go through the door. And in this room, there are some lava pools. Those are not instant death hazards, but like the spikes at the beginning of the game, they will deal you damage over time while you're in them, and they also slow down your movement speed and reduce your ability to jump. So you want to make sure to keep yourself out of the lava pools. That should seem fairly intuitive, just in case you would like to avoid those. There's more worms in here as you make your way up the left side of the room and come across. Now, in this area, you have the option to go up or down, and at this point in the game, we need to head upwards. We'll have to come back here later and take the down path, but for now, we can't get very far by going that way, so just make your way up to the top of this room. Every area of the game has several of those overhead perspective interior zones that only Jason can enter on foot. Most of the time, we only want to go into the one where the boss is located, but here in Area 2, we'll make an exception. If we go to this interior zone, there are several of those F power-ups here that we can use to make our gun a lot stronger. And in the back room here, We'll even find a flashing F, which will raise it four levels. And although it looks like I could still fill it one more level, which I can, this is the most powerful beam that I'm using right now, and you can just see what it does. It will wreak havoc on the enemies in this area. Try not to get hit so you can preserve the weapon, but if you need to go back into there, you can exit and re-enter, and those power-ups will respawn. Once your gun is where you want it to be, make your way back to the left, and we want to continue climbing this corridor. Watch out for these skulls that drop bombs on us. They do a decent amount of damage. Now, if you are damaged while you are in the exterior locations, that won't affect the gun that we have for Jason when we're on foot 
and the interior sections. We don't have to worry about that. Make your way to the right at the top of the room. Watch out for these ladybug enemies. Continue into this tight corridor, which is very close to the interior that we need to access for the boss. Once we get over these two lava pools, we're going to make our way down. And if we go all the way to the bottom of this particular shaft, we're going to find a lightning bolt icon, which is the thunder break weapon. It's another one of those consumable weapons that we can use on our Sophia the Third tank. Unfortunately, it is not as good as the multi-warhead missiles that we also have. In this room, we will find another interior, and we'll press down and enter the second stage's interior zone where the boss is located. So you want to make your way to the right here. There's an F power up in this room, and then you'll go up. Watch out for this guy. He can only shoot in four directions, so if you just kind of turn to the left and hit him with the edge of your beam, he won't be able to damage you. Same thing with this guy. Just don't stand directly in front of him and you'll be fine. You can't actually damage those teleporter enemies until they're out of their gray form, but once they're green they are vulnerable. Be careful when you come up into this room that you don't get shot immediately by that four-way attacker. And make your way over to the right. There's several eyeballs in here, and annoyingly, they have hit me and decreased the power of my gun several levels, but that's okay, because right over here in the bottom of this room, we'll find another flashing F power-up, as well as a health refill, which is going to take us right back to maximum guns. Be careful as you make your way to the right, because we are close to the boss now. Stand slightly to the side of this enemy. And there is another gun power up there if you need it. Here we are. This is the second boss, Crabulous. Crabulous may be the game's easiest boss. You'll want to position yourself at the very bottom of the screen. And way down there, he won't be able to hit you with his green tentacles. Then all you'll need to do is just point yourself upwards and keep shooting at the moving mouth area. Our very powerful gun will be able to cancel out his enemy projectiles, so we should have no problem defeating Crobulus. The only thing that is tricky is that the wave-like pattern of our beam can make it difficult to hit his small hitbox. Just keep aiming at the mouth and eventually he will be defeated. If that's still a little bit too difficult for you, there is an alternate strategy that we can use by taking advantage of the grenade glitch. You'll want to position yourself right in front of Crabulous, and as soon as he starts moving, drop a grenade on him and pause the game. Wait for a little while and the sound will start to change that it's making, and just unpause the game, and you'll watch Crabulous explode. Now, that may kind of feel like cheating to you, and that's why I'm going to show you two different strategies you can use when a glitch strategy is possible in this game. Now, we're going to need to backtrack a little bit, so I'm going to speed this up. Just make your way back the same way that you came. Go across this long corridor. Back in this room, we will need to make our way down. I'm going to try out some of these thunder breaks since we're moving downward. I still don't really like this weapon very much. You'll use your alternate weapons in this game by pressing down and B. The problem with the Thunder Break is that it's fairly erratic. It doesn't actually just fire directly below you. Sometimes it fires a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left, and it's very unpredictable in that way. Now, we also did get an upgrade for defeating Crabulous, the Crusher Beam and we're going to use that here to break through these walls. So that's what our crusher beam does. And it will open up this passage to area three. We will encounter some new enemy types here in area three. These guys are called runners. And whenever you get close to them, 
they will activate and shoot some bombs at you. But until you get close, they will remain dormant. So you'll want to try to take them out from a distance whenever possible. That way they will never shoot their bombs at you and they'll never go off running. In this room, you don't want to go too far to the left here so that you get hit by that left sprinkler. But you need to take out the right one so that you can proceed downwards. The door that we need to go is directly below the one we entered the room in. Here we will encounter another new enemy type. This pink claw is called a worm pod, and it launches some of the most dangerous enemies in the game, worms. Fortunately for us, if it does launch the worm, then it's pretty much spent. It doesn't do anything else, so one worm and done. It doesn't just keep spawning them continuously. The best thing to do with the worm pods is to try to take them out before they drop the worm. Now in this vertical corridor, you want to stay to the far edge and jump up before actually jumping to the next platform. There's going to be runners that you can't see until you jump first. Take a leap and take out the runner, then jump up to the next platform. In this room, we'll take out some more runners, and what we want to do is make our way to the upper right corner. Watch out for the twister enemies there. Here's another worm pod. You can get on top of the door here and shoot it, and it will never launch that worm that it contains. Unfortunately, the gray worms in this room are a little bit more difficult to deal with. You'll probably need to use your alternate weapons on the Sophia the Third to be able to take them out. At this point though, you just want to keep making your way to the right here. Area 3 is one of the larger areas in the game. Despite its large size, Area 3 is fairly straightforward and is not that difficult to navigate. We will climb another vertical shaft here and encounter another new enemy type. These flying orbs will try to ambush you as you jump upwards here. Be very careful, they usually just kind of stay put where they are until you get close to them. Jump on top of the door that you entered the room with to get a good shot at these worm pods. You'll want to take them out before you move forward so that they never launch their worms. We can also take out these two worm pods in a similar fashion. And as we head over to the left here, this next worm pod is a little bit harder to prevent from being sprung, although I certainly could have got that one. Now, it looks like we just want to make our way all the way to the left here, but we actually need to go to the upper left corner. The lower left will lead us to a dead end. In this room, we will be ambushed by more runner enemies. Just like before, you often won't be able to see the runner until you advance the screen upward a bit. So don't just hastily jump from platform to platform. Make sure you advance the screen upward and then jump to the next platform. In this room, there's another sprinkler enemy. It can't actually hit you when you're directly below it, so that is the most effective way to deal with these guys. They're very good at shooting to the left and the right, and even just slightly to the left and right of their position, but when you're directly below, they just can't get you, and that's where you want to position yourself to take them out and sometimes they're just not on the screen until you move it up a little bit more. Which is certainly a limitation of an older game like this. Keep moving on to the right here. In this room, there it looked like there might be a fork, but we can't actually get up there until we have the hover, and that's going to be a shortcut that helps us exit this area after we get that hover upgrade. I'm going to use my multi-warhead missiles to take out this worm pod. And I'm just going to do... I should just do some jump attacks here. So just jump and shoot it right at the bottom of your jump. We definitely want to take that guy out so we don't take any unnecessary hits here. And this is the last room that we need to get through before we reach the interior that we're looking for in this area. We just have to make our way all the way to the left and then it's going to wrap around 
and we'll go back to the right. But there are no offshoots to this room, so we can't get lost at this point. Also, this is kind of a point of no return. We won't be able to get back up until we get the hover upgrade, which we're going to find soon. But if you had anything that you wanted to do before getting to this room for whatever reason, well, uh, there's no turning back once you get down this far. And this is it. Let's hop out of our tank and do another interior area. Now you'll notice that my gun is still fully powered up because that Crabulous fight is so easy. Coming into here, we can take advantage of the power of the most powerful gun in that it can actually shoot through walls. You'll want to kind of advance the screen down a bit so that the enemies actually appear, but then you can move back and use the walls for cover and just shoot right through them, or you could stand to the side and use the waviness of your beam to also take out enemies like this. See, I'm just gonna hit them that way. Let's face it, if it was real life and you were actually Jason, you would probably use anything you could find for cover so that you wouldn't get shot by the enemies. It only makes sense. We have a very powerful gun. Why wouldn't we want to stand behind walls and take advantage of that? So just keep making your way down, and when we go through the next door, you're going to want to head straight down right away so you don't get hit by these traps. So move straight down, but keep shooting because there's some enemies down there at the bottom. And over here on the right, there's going to be a laser turret which is another very dangerous enemy, but just kind of hide behind the wall here, and we can hit him with the edge of our beam. Makes it way easier. Now, if you did take any hits getting up to this point, or maybe didn't have the most powerful gun, well, there are several gun power-ups in this room that you can find by just shooting the green boxes here. Now, even if you do have the best gun, you still should shoot the green boxes because there are some missile upgrades for our Sophia the third tank that you can find. The homing missiles are very good, so you'll want to grab those whenever you can. And up in the next room, we will face the Area 3 boss, Photophage. Photophage is actually like 16 bosses. Now the first one always appears in the middle of the room, and the next five appear at the top of the screen and they kind of move from left to right. Then the next ones will alternate. Left side, right side, left side, right side. If at any point you don't kill one of them, it will remain on the screen and you won't be able to damage it until it wakes up again. And each time it wakes up, it'll either like shoot three lasers at you or shoot one spinning laser at you. But that's all you have to do, just kind of know where they're going to appear and be ready to shoot them, and you should have no problem getting the hover upgrade. Once we get back into this room, we need to backtrack a bit, so I'm going to speed this up. So just head back over to the left, and the hover will allow you to fly, so that will help you get back up out of the hole there. Make your way just the same way that you came. Watch out for the worm pods in this room, they will try to ambush you. And once we get back into this room, we can take a shortcut to get out of Area 3. Now, when I first played this game, I searched for hours in Area 3, trying to figure out where is Area 4. Unlike Area 1, which had Area 2 within it, and Area 2, which had Area 3 within it, Area 3 does not contain Area 4. This seems kind of like a dirty trick, but you actually have to go all the way back to the very beginning of the game, and that's where we can use Hover to fly up and get to Area 4. So we just took that shortcut through those blocks, and we're going to make our way up here, destroy this runner enemy, and once we get out of Area 3, there's going to be a shortcut through Area 2, which will get us back to Area 1 very quickly. You know, you might think, how would you have ever figured that out? Well, if you have the game's instruction manual, surprisingly, they just spell it out for you. 
they not only tell you that Area 4 can be found in Area 1, they actually draw a somewhat detailed map that shows you exactly where to find Area 4. So you want to come through the rocks here, and right up here is another tunnel that we weren't able to access before we had the crusher beam. And in here, just kind of push through to the left. And this is a shortcut that will take us right through Area 2 and get us right back to Area 1, which is where we need to go. Keep making your way to the left. You may recognize that this is the first room of Area 2. And right here at the end, we will be able to teleport back to Area 1. And yeah, let's just speed it up again. Make your way all the way back to the game's very first room. And that's where we need to get to. So you remember how to get there? Head over here, climb up all the way to the top, and then head to the left. All right, shoot through this sprinkler and through the door. And here we are, back where it all began. As you make your way to the left, we need to consider our hover gauge. I think I have enough hover already to be able to make it up to area four, but we might as well just fill it up to the max. This is a very good spot right here to farm for hover. So I'm looking for those H bubbles and on this platform we'll be continuously attacked by some of these twister enemies and they frequently drop the H icons. So there we go. We now have full hover power. And once you have full hover, continue to make your way to the left. I'm going to need to be fairly cautious here. I don't have a lot of health left. Alright, got a P. That helps. And if I'm lucky I had it, I would have died there. Alright, another P icon. Now we're doing alright. And there's the ledge that we were looking for, so we'll jump and hold the jump button to hover. And there's going to be an enemy up there, so make sure you give them enough space. So you want to go a bit more to the right than you think you might have to. That's one of the reasons for having max hover. It will allow us to give that enemy a little bit more space so that we can shoot him and get to the ledge where we needed to reach. And once we get into this descending vertical shaft, We'll just need to take out a few more of these wall walker enemies and we will find the entrance to Area 4. There's a lot of water in Area 4 and with this dark brown and green color palette, I've always seen it as Blaster Master's sewers. Make your way to the right, blasting any of these wall walkers that are in your way. Once we go through this tunnel, this room is kind of like the crossroads of Area 4. If you were to take the path down and to the right, you would hit a locked barrier, and that's the way that we'll eventually get to Area 5. But for now, we want to take the door in the lower left. In this room, we'll encounter some more jumper and floater enemies. These are just the same guys that we've been fighting the entire game, so they should not be a problem for you now. Just keep making your way to the left, and once we go through the door here, we're going to need to head downwards. You'll notice there is an interior space there where we could jump out as Jason, but as usual, the one that we actually need to get to is located down in the deepest, darkest corner of this area. This is a very large room and is a bit of a maze. Make your way all the way to the right, and then you're going to want to drop down, but not all the way. In the middle, you'll want to make your way to the left. Cut all the way to the left, and when you get to the dead end, you'll want to head down and skip the first one, but then make the next right. And I don't want to hit this mine, I can shoot it. You just need to time your shot so that you shoot right before you land. There we go. Make your way over to the right. Basically, we are trying to get to the bottom of this area. We need to fight through some orbs. And in this spot here, I'm going to get this P. I just want to keep going over to the right. 
The water here won't damage you, but it does slow you down, so try to stay out of those little water traps. When you see the blocks change to the more green color, you will know that you're going the right way. Head all the way to the bottom. We can go into that water, it's okay, but it will slow us down. So I'm going to try to avoid it. See how it makes your jump a little bit weaker. And we need to use hover here. If you don't have any hover, you're going to need to farm it by killing some of the enemies here. So you'll use it to get up on this ledge and then make your way over to the left. There's going to be a very large ladder over here to the left. We will need to exit our Sophia the Third tank and ascend that ladder as Jason. So hit select to get out of the tank and we will climb up and this is the interior we were looking for. This interior is a good bit different than any of the other ones that we've encountered so far. First of all, there's an instant death hazard here, the water. If you walk off this platform into the water, you will instantly die. Now. There is a cool trick you can do where if you take damage from an enemy, you get temporary invincibility. And while you have those invincibility frames, you can actually walk over the water like some kind of hazmat suit Jesus. So there is a nice little shortcut you can do at the beginning of this level if you're willing to take the risk. Uh, I can show it to you in a little inset here. You would just take a hit from an enemy and just scurry right down to the right. It is actually very risky, and with a fully powered up gun, well, okay, full, fully powered again, we certainly don't want to take a lot of risks going through here. I would much rather take the long way around, but if you want to try the shortcut, it is doable. Just don't be all the way at the bottom of the screen, you want to be a little bit higher, and as soon as you take that hit, you have to walk over very quickly. Your invincibility frames will run out quite fast. Make your way around here. There's some extra hover for our Sophia the Third tank, which that's pretty nice. And we're using the walls as cover here again. There's no walls here, so we'll want to get careful with our gun here and try to hit these guys with the edge of the wave beam. Don't worry about that flashing P in the middle of the water. It's certainly not worth taking damage to try to grab it and try to get behind the wall here to take out this guardian enemy. Go through the door here. And we just need to make our way over to the right and we will arrive at the fourth boss. Guess who it is? It's our faithful pet, Fred. Hold down the A button to strafe and then go all the way to the top of the screen pointing downwards. Make sure you're not on top of the boss when it spawns but once it's made a couple jumps, you'll be able to stay up there and it won't damage you as long as you're at the very top of the screen. Now it does three alternating attacks. The tongue attack, the bouncing ball attack, and then a heat seeking fireball. You do need to avoid the heat seeking fireball. It can hit you at the top of the screen, but you're safe with the other two attacks. You can only damage it when the mouth is open. So you kind of want to stay on top of it but just remember that every third attack is going to be that fireball, so you want to wait for it to shoot the fireball and then quickly move out of the way so that it doesn't hit you. The fireball will kind of commit to a direction once it's shot. If this boss is too difficult for you, there is another way you can beat him using the grenade glitch. So you need to wait until he's vulnerable, stay at the top of the screen, drop the grenade on him and pause the game, and then just wait for the grenade damage sound to change, unpause, and that's it. Fred has been destroyed. And now we have the key. Well, what's the point of going on if our beloved pet is dead? That, that was the only thing that we came for. There, there's no reason to go on. Well, except for vengeance. Oh yeah, Plutonium boss. I know you put Fred there guarding that key so that I would have to kill him, thinking that it would traumatize me and I wouldn't proceed on with my quest. Oh yeah, that's where you're wrong, buddy. We're coming for you now, and it's personal. 
make your way back the same way that you came. You will need to use a little bit of hover to get out of the beginning. And we're back at that crossroads. We're going to head across to the right. In this room, we'll need to exit our tank to be able to use the key as Jason. We'll climb up this ladder, and we need to be very careful at the top here. If we fall too far as Jason, we'll die. Very carefully make your way to the right. We'll take out this sprinkler. I like to crawl off the edge of each of these platforms. You can actually fall a little bit farther as Jason without dying if you use your crawl move. Once you get to the bottom, we'll be able to get back into our tank and move on to area 5. But I did promise to tell you that there was a way to skip one of the areas in the game. Well, that area is this one. It's area 4. If you come back here and we don't have the key yet and we're in this area, we can try to walk through the door to the left, but at the last second I'm going to go back to the right and what it will do is it'll wrap me through the screen to the other end where the key is. Now you'll notice I have to push down a little bit to the left of the door and then press down in front of that door. Well, here's the downside. Once we're through to area 5, we need to lose all of our lives and use a continue to be able to get Sophia the Third tank into this area. Unfortunately, you only have four continues. If you die after using the fourth continue, it will kick you back to the title screen. There is a way to get through this area by doing screen wraps through this door. Oh, and also, if you don't have a good gun power-up, there's a nice interior right down below there that you might want to check out to refill your gun before we move on. You definitely want maximum gun for the interior at the end of Area 5. The other big downside of using that Area 4 skip is you won't have the key when we have to go back through that area again after we complete Area 6. You'll actually have to use another continue right there on the right side of the barrier so that you reappear at the beginning of Area 4. So the only way to skip Area 4 is to waste two continues. Decide if that's really worth it for you, but it is a cool trick. Once you get all the way to the bottom here, we will have to exit our tank and continue to swim as Jason. I find it odd that in the previous area, walking into the water was an instant death hazard, when now it looks like we can remain underwater literally forever. It's a little bit of an inconsistency there, Blaster Master. We will be spending a lot of time outside of our tank here in Area 5, as the bulk of this area is underwater. Until we get the dive engine, the Sophia the Third will not be able to handle itself well in the water, and will be much better off swimming as Jason. Make your way all the way to the left, and go through this tunnel. In this room, we'll need to head down and to the left to proceed on. Avoid that tunnel in the upper left. Make your way through here. You'll want to make sure to take out these fish enemies whenever you see them. If you don't, more and more fish will start to appear on the screen as you move forward, and eventually they could become overwhelming. So you're better off just taking them out whenever you can, so that you don't end up with like four fish on the screen at one time. You'll go down underneath this ledge, and then make your way back to the upper left of this room. We want to skip that tunnel in the lower left. Go through here. In this room, we'll just need to make our way across it. Stay on the lower path here, and this is it. This is the interior we were looking for. As soon as we get into this interior, we will be ambushed by three pink walker enemies. You'll need to take them out quickly and be ready for them to attack you. You do not want to take hits in here, 
so make sure to stay on the wide side of these turns so that you don't get hit by these dasher enemies that will come running at you. They will only activate when you're fairly close. Stay as far away as you can and shoot them through the walls when possible, like this guy will take him out through the wall. Or use the standing to the side of the wall and shooting with the wide part of the beam strategy. What can we do to this guy? Here we'll find another pink walker enemy and we're just going to continue to make our way to the bottom of the screen. This area is not a maze. It's very straightforward. We just don't want to take any hits in here and lose our gun. There is a laser cannon as soon as you enter this room, which is extremely dangerous. Once you've defeated him though, the rest of the enemies as you make your way from left to right in this room can easily be defeated by hiding behind the walls. Just use the walls for cover, make your way to the right, and there's going to be some laser cannons coming up that we'll want to be extra cautious of. They are right behind this particular wall. We can shoot this guy with the wide part of our beam. He won't be able to get us in that position. And here we'll need to take out another laser cannon. And there's actually a second one up here too, so be ready for him. We did get a gun power up, so if you would taken one hit you'd be fine. But we've made it to the boss. This is hard shell. Strafing is very important against this boss, so make sure you're facing upward and hold down the A button and don't let it go until this fight is over. You'll need to keep mashing the B button so that you're shooting your wave beam, and you'll want to move left and right so that you're always right in front of hard shell. If you do that, your beam will actually cancel out the bubbles that he shoots at you and you'll also continue to do him damage. Over some time, you'll be able to defeat him fairly easily this way. Sometimes I even change my grip on the controller so that my middle finger is holding down A and I'm tapping with my pointer finger. If you don't have the best gun though, there is another way to beat him. You want to come down in this room and wait to exit the room until right when it turns black. If you do it perfectly, Hard Shell will appear in this glitched form and he won't be able to shoot the bubbles at you. You can still get hit by the claws, so you'll need to be careful of that. But if you just stay far enough away and just keep shooting at him, even with your weakest gun, you will easily be able to defeat him in this form. This trick is not very easy to pull off. If you go a little bit too soon, well then you'll just exit the room and you'll have to go back in and try it again. If you go too late, well then you'll be stuck in the room with hard shell and you'll have to fight him the normal way. You'll also need to go back down into the room to pick up the dive engine after he's destroyed. It is a tough trick to pull off, but if you don't have the full powered gun when you're fighting hard shell there, I really don't know a better way to beat him. So I would attempt this trick if you do take a death on the boss, it may be your only chance of actually defeating him. And you'll just need to go back out the same way that you came. We will reconvene with our Sophia the Third tank, but this time it's now been equipped with the dive engine. You may remember before that our tank would sink like a stone whenever it was in water, but now that we have that dive engine, we're actually a very capable submarine. You're going to want to head up into the upper left. You'll see some rocks up there that we'll be able to shoot through, and then head on through the tunnel. We're a lot more powerful now than we were before when it was just Jason swimming around. So feel free to launch some of those sub-weapons if you really want to give it to these enemies. Just make your way down to the bottom of this shaft, and you're going to want to head to the left. I might kill these enemies first though, and see if I can get some of my health refilled. That would be nice. There we go. Grab that P and head over to the left. 
In this room, we have the ceiling orbs, which will appear on the screen and attack you almost without warning. So be ready for those guys to show up. If you get close enough to them, they'll just arc right over you. Head through the tunnel here. So we're going to want to head on up to the top of this shaft. And make our way to the right into this more cavernous looking room. It kind of looks like you may be able to get out over to the left, but you can't. So what we need to do is dive engine between the stalactites on the top of the ceiling and the pillars on the bottom. All while taking out these fish enemies. And you can see how many of them can appear on the screen if you're not careful. And make our way through to the right. It's kind of a straight shot from here to area 6. You won't get lost going through this. Another room with the stalactites and pillars. Just make your way underneath those stalactites. Head on through the tunnel. We need to go up here. You can go either to the left or the right, but there's more space on the right, so that's going to make it a little bit easier. And we're back to dry land. But not anymore. Suddenly we're underwater again. Now, you can take either path here. I like the upper path where we are out of the water. That's just a little bit better for me. It's possible to go across the bottom as well. Just make your way to the right. We're going to skip that interior area and head down. Just bust through these rocks with our crusher beam. And make your way through another tunnel. Over here, this will be a familiar room. This is where we started out before. If you were to go into the upper left here, that would take you back to area 4, but we want to head over to the right. This is the tunnel that will take us to area 6. Watch out for these snail enemies on the bottom of the screen. And there it is. Press down on the gate to go in. Welcome to the Blast Chiller. If you are making a platforming game for the Nintendo, you just have to include an ice level, and Blaster Master is no exception. The ice in this level certainly will give you some issues with traction for our tank. So the best way to deal with that is to jump if you're sliding out of control. I'm going to jump on top of the door here and take out these mine enemies before I move forward. The goal in this room is to make it to the door in the upper right corner. If you start to slip around, just remember to keep jumping. Just do a few shallow jumps, and that will help you regain control on the ice. These enemies are called hands, and they will throw some bombs at you, and they actually launch quite a good few of them. So you want to take those out from far away if possible. Just like a lot of the enemies in this game, the hands only become active whenever you get close to them. In this room we just need to make our way to the right, but there are a few worm and mine enemies here. The perfect enemies that are hard to hit with our cannon. How good. In this room there are some dome enemies, and it looks like the walls would damage you but they're safe. It's okay to touch those walls even though they look very spiky. You're going to want to make your way to the top here and head through the door to the right. We can destroy these walls with our crusher beam, but we want to be careful that we don't completely destroy them so that we can use them as platforms. Over here there are some homing missiles but you want to be very careful you don't fall off the edge there or you'll be doing a good bit of backtracking to get back to this point. I'm going to switch to those homing missiles and you can see how effective they are. If there's several enemies on the screen, you'll actually launch multiple homing missiles. Although they do seem to have trouble hitting the worms when they're on the same level as you, sometimes the homing missiles will just hover right above the worm 
until you or it moves. Similar thing with the mine enemies like that one. Be careful when you're destroying these walls. You want to make sure that you remove enough of it so that you can reach this platform. And then you just want to roll off to the right. You'll land on a platform that you can't see. And then jump back up. And you're going to make your way over to the upper right corner. Now if you fall off here, you're going to have to backtrack a bit to get back to this point. So you'll want to do your best to just take your time and don't fall off. Same thing in this room, although I think this room is a little bit easier. There's not that big ledge to worry about. Here you just need to slide through there. It's not as difficult of a jump as it might look. We have some of those insect enemies in this room, and once again, don't worry about touching the side walls. They look dangerous, but as you can see, they are totally not. Once again, we're going to be making our way to the upper right corner. That's going to be the theme here in Area 6. We're just moving up and to the right. In this room, we can find some goodies hidden within the blocks. So if you shoot over here to the left, there are some multi-warhead missiles. So you'll definitely want to grab those. And there are some other ones hidden in these blocks as well. Now straight across there are some homing missiles, but you're going to want to use hover to get over there and my hover is actually empty right now, so I'm not going to take advantage of those homing missiles unfortunately. There are some more down here at the bottom though, so just make sure to destroy the blocks in this room so you don't miss out on any of these extra sub weapons. It's always nice to have extras of those head over here to the right. We need to climb this shaft. Now those spikes that you see there, those will do you damage. They won't do you damage until you actually get squarely on top of them. So you can, well there you go, see? But you can roll the edge of your tank onto them and you won't take any damage. So just be careful. Remember to use your jumps to regain your traction in this room. And once again, we're just heading up and to the right. We've got ourselves another worm tunnel here. You can try to take them out when they're on platforms that are above you. Or you can also lit loose with some of your sub weapons. I like to use the homing missiles in here. They usually work on these guys. As usual, the worms are some of the most dangerous enemies in the game just because they're very difficult to hit. Head through the door to the right and once again, we're going to be breaking through these blocks and making our way to the top of the screen and then taking the door in the upper right corner. Watch out for these ceiling spikes here. It should seem fairly obvious that those can damage you, although they're not an instant death hazard. Now you'll notice that if you turn your tank to the side, it will change where you're shooting up. If you're in a corner and you need to shoot upwards, you may need to tap left to actually hit the block directly above you. So you tap left there. See how that works? We need to make a little ladder to get up to the interior room above us here. Especially since I don't have any hover right now. So there, turn to the left. And you see how that slight adjustment makes it easier to clear the blocks above you and we're gonna head inside. The ice hazards that we dealt with in the Sophia the Third make their presence known here in an interior section and in this first part here you will slide a good bit whenever you touch these ice patches so make sure not to end up in the spikes they can deal you a decent amount of damage although they are not an instant death hazard. You need to make your way to the bottom of the screen here and go through the door and you want to head to the right I'm being a little bit reckless here because there are just a ton of gun power-ups in this next room so it's not that big of a deal if you lose your gun heading into here or if you didn't have it at all when you got here so there's a flashing F right there so that gives me four gun levels right away and we're gonna go right below this little ice ledge and make our way across the bottom of the screen and up in this area 
we're gonna find all kinds of gun power-ups. So there's two gray Fs and a flashing one too. Also some refills for my hover energy, which has been quite low lately. Make your way back through. Now that we have the maximum gun, we can reveal any other power-ups that we might have missed. I wouldn't mind having a little bit of health back. There's one up there if I can grab it. Oh, and even more gun power-ups. This is what I'm talking about. You don't have to worry at all if you took some damage in that first room. Now that we're in here, we will want to be a little bit more conservative. Although some of these enemies that shoot in four directions will also drop gun power-ups. So if you take some more damage, it shouldn't be too hard to get back to full power again. We are going to want a good gun whenever we fight this boss that's coming up. And we're almost there now. Looks like I took a damage. I bet one of these guys should have a power-up for me. Hopefully. Okay, this guy does. Perfect. Head through the door on the left. Now remember that you can shoot through the walls whenever you have maximum guns. So that will certainly be an effective strategy here. And carefully tiptoe around these spikes so you don't take unnecessary damage. And here we are at the boss, Frozen Crabulous. Unlike the previous Crabulous, you can't just hide at the bottom of the screen this time. So I like to start at the left and then kind of work my way down to the bottom once he gets too close. You'll notice that his tentacles are way longer this time, but our gun still does cancel out his shots. It doesn't, however, cancel those rocks that he throws at us. So what you'll really want to do is try to avoid standing under the claws. It seems like whenever you pass over the claws for more than a second or two, that's when it launches the rocks. If Frozen Crabulous is too difficult for you, once again, we can use the grenade glitch. Make sure you pause for long enough to actually kill Frozen Crabulous. He takes a couple more hits than some of the previous bosses did. Once he's defeated, we'll be able to pick up the Wall 1 upgrade. Now the Wall 1 upgrade will allow our tank to drive up or down vertical walls. We will need that to access Area 7. Area 6, however, is a dead end. We need to go back out the way that we came, but we don't have to go through all of that. There's actually a shortcut right here. We just need to break through the ceiling here. Remember that you can tap the other direction if you're slightly off with your upward shot. Just make your way to the left and suddenly we'll be back to the very beginning of Area 6. Just that quickly. Make your way through this room and press down and here we are, Area 5. Now we need to make our way back to Area 2. So back through that key door, up into here, all the way back to Area 1, and then we need to go through this very first room. If you ever had the Wall 2 upgrade, there's actually a bunch of power-ups on the ceiling of this room in the upper right corner, but we only have Wall 1 right now. So we can't get them at this point. I'm going on through here. And we're into area two. And we need to make our way all the way back to the room that splits where you can go up or down. We're going to go down this time. Make your way around the lava pools. This is the room I'm talking about. We went up the previous time. This time we're going to head downwards. Make your way down to the left. Down, down, between this wall. Use the crusher and go into this tunnel in the lower left of the room. 
we're going to go all the way to the left and at the end of this room we will find a vertical shaft now this is where we need that wall one so just drive right at the wall and we'll ride all the way to the top and you'll kind of bounce off the ceiling and hold to the right go through this door down below us we can grab a couple power-ups so I'm gonna go down here and get some multi warhead missiles homing missiles and some extra health take out this orb or I always call that thing a ladybug there aren't actually official names for the enemies in this game so I'm just uh, using ones that are kind of uh, conventional names for these enemies take out another ladybug orb here we are straight from the freezer and into the frying pan area 7 is the fire level carefully make your way down to the lower right there is lava below you don't want to end up in there it'll do you some damage area 7 is simply massive buckle up and get ready now this looks like it would be a door to take us to a new area but it's not it just takes us to a different part of area 7 watch out for these twisters and take another door at the end you're going to want to break through at the top here and you remember if you turn to the left you'll tilt your cannon just enough so that you'll change your upward trajectory make your way all the way to the right here and there will be an opening which will allow you to drop down we're basically trying to get down to the bottom of this room so just keep digging your way across and dropping down when possible down here we're gonna go back to the right watch out there's a wall walker here and in the lower right corner we'll go through another door there are some jumpers in this corridor and also watch out for the sprinkler of course remember that directly below the sprinkler you're safe just make your way to the end press down and we have another one of these digging rooms you need to make your way to the right side of this one and there will be a door in the upper right and another long corridor this one has some more of those pink twister enemies just keep heading to the right I like to just keep shooting in case any of those twisters come in my path I'll be able to take them out I need to be careful here there's a lot on screen it's kind of uh, slowing the game down a bit just keep heading to the right and this is a very very long corridor here there aren't any enemies so just take your time you don't want to end up in the lava just carefully jump from platform to platform and make your way through to the right you could go up in this room but you don't want to right now that'll take you back to the beginning so stay along the bottom and make your way across the top of this room and to the right this is another enemy free room also don't be worried about the ceiling in this room it won't hurt you this corridor is full of these gunner enemies which will shoot at you if you leave them on screen for very long but as soon as they hit the ground I just blast them so keep making your way to the right and shoot the gunners when you can if you take damage they often drop peas this is the final room and it's a bit of a maze head down to the left below the door once you get down to the bottom left corner there you want to make your way over to the right and then back up and over to the right again now you will make your way down and the ultimate goal is in the upper right corner of this room we will want to climb up here I'm using a little bit of hover and drive up the wall flip over and just make my way to the right and here it is the area 7 interior the interior for area 7 is very similar to the one from area 4 it's populated entirely by these guardian enemies and it has a lot of these tight narrow platforms 
that take you across the lava, which performs exactly the same as the water. It's an instant death hazard, but if you are hit by an enemy and have those few seconds of invincibility, you can walk over the lava while you're invincible. There are several little shortcuts you can do here if you're willing to take a lot of risks. I would prefer to keep my gun intact. The boss here is very difficult, especially if you plan on not using any glitches to finish the game. I would just rather be a little more cautious, but there is a very fast route if you're willing to throw caution to the wind and just kind of bump into some enemies and try to walk over the lava. Keep making your way around. The path is fairly straightforward. You'll just want to head down, take this guy out, continue around. I got hit, that's annoying. But there will be another gun power up right here in the lower right corner. There we go. Then we need to walk up this big loop. Now if you're willing to take damage, you can just walk straight up and that guy will shoot you every time and you'll just cross right over and you'll be at the boss. I want to preserve my gun. So we're going to head around the long way taking out any enemies in our path. Being fairly careful, there is one up here. Take him out, all right. And we are through to the boss, Solar Fred. Well, if it wasn't traumatic enough fighting Fred the first time, now we have to fight a jacked up mutant version of the previous mutated version. And this one does not mess around. You'll notice that I'm not staying at the top of the screen this time. That's because he can definitely get you up there. Solar Fred knows no boundaries. Oh, and he has way crazier attacks. Are you seeing this stuff? He doesn't keep his mouth open for very long, so you won't have a lot of opportunity to hit him either. The best thing that I have found to do is to try to attack him from the side. Most of his attacks, either the flaming tongue attack or the bouncy ball attacks, won't be able to damage you unless you're standing directly in front of the frog. I also try to like to kind of lure him to one side of the screen so I can quickly hurry to the other side of the screen and shoot him from a distance. It looks like he attacks at random, but these attacks are not random at all. In fact, Solar Fred does the exact same pattern every time, and if you can memorize this pattern, you will have no problem beating him. The only attacks you really need to worry about are the heat-seeking fireballs. So here's the pattern from the top. The first thing he's going to do is shoot three fireballs. Then he's going to stop and not attack at all. There it is. Then he's going to do the bouncy ball attack, followed by a second bouncy ball attack, there and then the heat seeking fireball watch out another bouncy balls another bouncy balls heat seeking fireball is coming up watch out and then he's going to do the tongue attack but the tongue will be followed by four fireballs then he's going to do the tongue attack again this time with no fireballs and then we're back to the top so here's the pattern one more time three fireballs watch out Stop and do nothing is the next thing. Bouncy balls. More bouncy balls. There. Heat seeking fireball. Bouncy balls. Bouncy balls. Fireballs next. Here comes the tongue followed by four fireballs. One, two, three, four. The tongue with no fireballs is next. And so if you know this pattern, you can definitely beat them. Even if you have to get close with grenades, just make sure you're only getting close to attack him when he's going to do the tongue with no fireball attacks or the bouncy ball attacks. You really want to stay as far away as you can from this guy when he's doing those fireballs to make sure that you can dodge him. And if you can just keep this up, 
you will eventually persevere. Oh man, I got hit. All right. And okay, we got him. Now, if Solar Fred is too hard for you, you can use the grenade trick on him. And let me tell you, when I finished this game as a kid, I definitely had no idea how to beat this guy without using the grenade trick. Make sure to give him a few bounces and set it up. And there it is. You've defeated Solar Fred, and we'll be able to get the Wall 2 upgrade. The Wall 2 upgrade seems like a really great thing to get. Instead of just being able to drive up vertical walls, now we can drive across the ceiling and you can just kind of drive around anything. You can just wrap yourself all the way around platforms, whatever you want to do. And all of that sounds well and good, except that it makes controlling the tank very awkward now. Whenever you reach the end of a platform and you try to jump, instead, a lot of the time you're going to wrap around the edge of that platform and continue moving. See, that's not the best. The thing that you need to get used to doing once you have the wall to upgrade is jumping a little bit earlier than you think you should. We're gonna make our way back the way that we came and remember this room where I said if we went up, we'd be able to head back to the beginning. Well, that's what this is. This is a shortcut. Drive your way up here and you can break through that. Up in this tunnel to the right, we can just climb up these platforms. In the upper left corner of this room is the exit. Now, where is area 8. Area 8 is the final area and it is hidden within area 3. Now if you thought how would you ever figure out that it's in area 3? Well, once again if you have the instruction manual for Blaster Master it really does just spell it out for you. There's an actual drawn map in there that shows you exactly where you need to go in area 3 to get to area 8. There are no secrets in that manual. This is the room where we need to get to, so you want to get over here and drive up onto the ceiling and make your way to the left. Be careful that you don't get hit or you'll get knocked off the ceiling and you have to go back to the beginning and drive around the ceiling again. So that's how you get around those spikes. It's the only way. Just make your way through. You're going to head up the wall over here. And that, of course, is the entrance to the final area. Area 8. Area 8 definitely has an alien vibe to it, but that doesn't mean there's no worm enemies. The good news is they often drop refills for our hover, and having some extra hover here can be very helpful. In this room, you can take a shortcut just by going through these spikes right here. You will take a little bit of damage, but it is extremely helpful to take this shortcut. You will only need to get to that door over on the right. And in this room, you want to make sure you jump early so that you don't walk over the edge and end up in those spikes. It's almost like the developers knew that the wall 2 upgrade would make controlling the tank a bit awkward, and they put some traps in here that take advantage of that awkwardness. Make your way to the lower left corner of this room. And this next room is a tricky one. You want to jump early here and use hover if you have it. But you can also just edge very carefully to the very corner of that platform and jump. And you'll be able to clear it without using hover. In this room you'll want to drive up across the ceiling to get over to the left side of the room. And then you can drop down safely without hitting a bunch of these spikes make your way all the way to the left and then detach from the wall. You'll want to use some of your upgraded weapons in this area. There is nothing left to save them for. So make your way down the left side until you get to this area right here. Then you want to start making your way over to the right. 
jump and use some hover to clear this. And here is the passage to the next room, which may be the most difficult room in the entire game. This room is much easier if you have some hover to use. You'll want to jump a little bit early in these low ceiling areas and use your hover to finish clearing the spikes. You'll almost certainly roll into some of these spike traps though. It's pretty much inevitable. Use whatever sub weapons you need to take out the worms in this room. You don't want to take any extra damage while you're trying to clear this very difficult corridor. And when you get to this room, it's just a simple vertical shaft that you'll want to drop down to the bottom. I am getting low on health, so I'm going to need to be very conservative with these mine enemies. You want to take the path on the left here, so the lower left. This room is going to take us to the goal. Grab that extra health as you fight these insect enemies. The skulls are pretty dangerous whenever I see them. I usually just start launching off whatever special weapons I have. We don't have a lot more to have to go through after this. The room that it connects to will have the final interior segment for us. So just keep making your way all the way to the left. It's going to curve downwards and then double back to the right. So get all the way down. These are the final enemies in the game. So whatever you got, it's time to use it now. I'm just going to launch whatever homing missiles I have. And just kind of keep making my way to the right. I have a pretty good amount of health now. I should be in good shape. In this room, you want to shoot the row one above you. So jump and shoot and then roll up the wall and just go straight across. If as long as you stay on this path, and I'll turn to the left so you can shoot up here and then roll up the wall, you'll easily make it to this final interior. The final interior is actually very easy. Now I did lose a gun power up when I fought Solar Fred, so you want to go up and to the right and shoot these blocks and you should find a gun power up, a flashing one. There it is. Alright, now that I have that, you just want to go straight up from the entrance. And here it is, the Plutonium Boss. He had been glaring at us from the label on the NES cartridge the entire time, and now it's time to take him down. It isn't that difficult to get up close and hit him with grenades, but if you have a good gun power up, your best bet is to go to the bottom of the screen, hold down A to strafe, and just start shooting upwards while trying to avoid those boulders that come down at you. As you shoot the boulders, you will be able to move them out of the way. So if you're keeping up some shots on the face, you may be able to deflect some of the boulders as well. But you do want to maneuver yourself around a little bit to try to avoid them. If you take some hits, you're going to have to get up close. Once he's destroyed, well, there's one more boss, the Underworld Lord. Now this guy, if you just get down in the lower right corner, not all the way to the right, but almost, he won't be able to hit you here. If he's shooting his whip at you, and he's angling it in your direction and hitting you, then you need to take a step to the left. If he's shooting it straight and you're getting hit, you need to take a step to the right. Otherwise, you just need to keep hitting him with grenades. And he is a very, very easy final boss for such a difficult NES game. Now all we can do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, it looks like the Plutonium boss's castle collapsed. Were we playing Blaster Master or Ninja Gaiden? What the heck is going on in this ending? How did the frog come back? Why do we have blue hair? This ending makes absolutely no sense. At the end of the Scholastic book, it was revealed that the Fred boss that was fought 
was actually an illusion that the plutonium boss had created to make us feel bad and not want to continue our quest. I don't know how the frog in the ending became demutated. I don't know, by magic maybe? Or maybe the radiation effects just wear off after a while? And maybe that's why our hair was blue. Maybe there was some kind of blue material inside that helmet and it just kind of dyed our head. We may never know the answers to these questions, but I do hope this video was able to help you finally save Fred and put the plutonium boss back in his rightful place. If it did, make sure to give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more mutants to fight and that's why we'll be back next week with another video game you can beat. Very thanks for watching.